Company accounts can be broadly divided into three different sections. At the front of the accounts, you will find reports and statements from the directors, the accountants, and other people involved in the company's operation. In the middle of the company accounts, you'll find the money, the balance sheet, profit, loss, tax, and other problems. And then towards the back after that, you will have the notes to the accounts, which has some extra detail on things like payments to related parties, um, more detail on where the money is going or coming from, and so on. I'm going to cover each of these in a different video. So in this video, I'm going to focus just on the reports and the statements at the front of your company accounts before we even get to any money or numbers. So I'll be covering what sorts of stories you can get from those reports and statements, and also some of the jargon you might come across and what particular jargon to look for and why, in particular terms like going concern and material uncertainty. Let's start with a really simple example. This is the uh, company accounts for Chesterfield FC Football Club and right at the front of the accounts is the chairman's statement and in that statement the chairman says this club does seem to have one or two so-called fans who are always knocking anything we try to do. I find it pathetic and the Derbyshire Times doesn't help. So we have here, even before we get to any numbers, a very obvious story. The chairman of a football club criticising his own fans and indeed the media as well. So there you have a decent story. Here's another example from Oxfam's uh, annual accounts. Now, this is a very large document with lots of text towards the beginning, lots of explanation. And uh, in that case, you might search around for particular keywords that you're interested in or browse and look for sections that might be interesting. In this case the safeguarding section might make you a little bit curious and indeed if you look within this you'll see there's a mention of allegations that were investigated and even incidents that were referred to services. Now no one seemed to pick this up at the time but um, afterwards in the next year or two there were stories about um, sexual misconduct and the charity was, was hit by a whole scandal around its safeguarding and uh, how it handled this sort of thing. And indeed, further stories also from company accounts would talk about staff that were being made redundant and so on. So the statement alone might give you something interesting or a lead to chase further detail on. But there are also key words to look for that can be particular red flags in terms of concerns or problems. A good example is the London Garden Bridge project. This was a project to create a garden across a bridge across the River Thames. And it was overseen by the Garden Bridge Trust, which was given a large amount of money to manage this project. Now, if you look in the company accounts, or if you looked in the company accounts for this uh, trust, you would find this. You would find passages, again, at the start of the uh, company accounts that said things like, due to the material uncertainties in existence, trustees are unable to conclude that the trust is a going concern. Now, what do these words mean? Why are they important? Well, going concern basically refers to the likelihood that a company or an organisation is going to be able to continue to operate for the next year or so, what might be called the foreseeable future. Now, if everything looks fine, the money's going to keep coming in, there are no problems that uh, might be anticipated in the next year, then the accountants will say that they're able to, that they're happy, basically, that, that this company can continue to operate as a going concern. However, sometimes the accountants will say that there are some doubts about this. And those doubts can vary in how strong they are. In some cases, they might say that it's uh, reliant on support from a parent company, for example, rather than just the business that they normally depend on. They might mention the phrase emphasis of matter, if they do this, that indicates some particular doubt and it will specify 
um, the assumptions that are problematic here. So it might be, for example, that some loans are going to be due to be paid in the next year. And uh, the emphasis of MASA might say that if those loans can be renewed, in other words, they, we don't have to pay them all back, then we're going to be OK. But if those loans are called in and we're asked to pay them back, then that's going to basically bankrupt potentially the company. You might notice sometimes that companies will delay accounts and this is um, often a sign that they're trying to find a way to avoid having an emphasis of matter in the accounts. Bolton Wanderers Football Club, for example, delayed their accounts for months and months as lots and lots of doubts started to surface about their ability to operate as a going concern. They did not want to publish accounts that basically admitted that. And this is what this might look like in uh, some company accounts. You can see the heading going concern. You can see emphasis of matter going concern and the phrase material uncertainty highlighted there. These are the sorts of things to look for. And this is how it looked in that um, Garden Bridge Trust uh, accounts as well. And you can see the issues that were being raised here. So, for example, they hadn't actually secured um, certain sites, certain land. Here's another example of a story based on purely the text at the front of a company account. And in this case, it's a, a care home company, which in its accounts says basically we've lost money because of Brexit and because of council cuts. This is what the accounts look like. So this is where the journalist has found this story. And you can see again, this is under emphasis of matter, going concern and also material risks and uncertainties. You can see at the bottom, for example, that they are saying that the impact of Brexit on the availability of nurses and hence the level of future agency usage is yet to be fully understood. So it's in a, in a you know, to translate this, what they're saying is because we're leaving the EU, it's going to be harder for us to recruit nurses. There are going to be fewer nurses from the European Union, which means it's going to cost more to use agency staff instead. I've also highlighted this occupancy um, uncertainty, which is highlighted. And basically what they're saying here is that if more people die than expected, then we're going to be in trouble because we're not going to have money coming in from those people. So these are examples of leads that you might find under material risks and uncertainties. These are the problems that we have or that we expect or that we're uncertain about. One more example also uh, about the Brexit vote. This is a charity called Lepra um, and uh, they raise money in the UK but they spend it in places like India and one of the problems that they highlighted following the Brexit vote was a depreciation in the pound uh, in terms of its value compared to the currency in India. And this was the sort of unexpected effect that you might not have thought about if you weren't looking at a charity's company accounts. What they're basically saying is that uh, every pound that we raise in the UK is now worth 20% less than it was before the vote and in terms of how much it will buy in India where we're spending it. Another phrase to mention, the last phrase I want to draw your attention to, is the phrase qualified opinion. It's always worth looking for the qualified opinion in, uh, in a company account and you'll get some sort of phrase like this, the basis of qualified opinion on financial statements. Um, and this is essentially the accountants saying, you know, on what basis they've been able to arrive at their opinion. And the qualified bit really means we can't be sure. We're qualifying our opinion. We're, we're kind of adding some caveats because we haven't got all the information that we might like. And you can see in this example, um, in arriving at this conclusion, so first of all, the directors have prepared the financial statements on the basis that the company is a going concern. So we've got that phrase going concern. And they're saying that, you know, that's what they're looking to, to try and be able to say. We're trying to be able to say that this is a going concern. It's going to be able to carry on doing business. But they then go on to say, in arriving at this conclusion, the directors have received assurances from the ultimate parent 
uh, the ultimate parent, that's the company that owns this company, it, ultimately, that that company um, undertaking, basically saying that funds will be made available as and if the company requires them, based on cash flow forecasts prepared by the directors. So they're basically saying, if you need money, we will give it to you, the, the company that owns this one. Now, the assurances, these promises, are subject to future events, such as various things. So the key thing here, even if all of that jargon perhaps starts to make you glaze over, is that the accountants are saying, we have been unable to obtain sufficient evidence to confirm that these events will take place or if the funds will be available in due course. So what they're saying is we haven't got the information that we would like. We're not confident in being able to say what we would like to say, that, that this company is going to be able to carry on operating. And then they go on to use this phrase material uncertainty and say that it has been disclosed. Um, but it's saying in view of the extent of the uncertainty relating to basically money being available, we've qualified our opinion in respect to that. So that's a key phrase to look for. And if you're looking on, if you're thinking, how do I report this? This is an example of one story, quite a good idea, um, looking at a, a whole bunch of accounts for academy schools and seeing how many of those gave a qualified opinion. And they found 93 of those accounts were given a qualified opinion in the years that they looked, I think three years. And they've said, you know, this means that aud auditors thought that they did not give a true and fair view of the company's affairs. They had not been properly prepared or they were not in accordance with the relevant regulations. And in the majority of cases, the concerns centred on information given about the pay of the principal or chief executive or other staff. So, again, this is basically saying this is a red flag. It's not a good thing. If lots of accounts have this in them, then it's a bad sign. And there can be various reasons for it, which are explained here. Um, if it was on a single company, you would explain that particular reason. And you would do some further reporting and interviewing to flesh that out. But that's why you would look for qualified opinion in a company's accounts. So these are the key points to round up from this video. First of all, we're not even looking at the, at the money yet. We're not looking at numbers and you don't need to be able to count to find stories in company accounts. The statements and other text at the beginning of a set of company accounts is often quite good source material for story leads and ideas and background. Um, but there are certain terms which are worth looking out for more than others, in particular, Jargon such as material uncertainties, going concern, qualified opinion, any of those is a red flag that means there are problems, there are concerns, and that's going to be a story you can report.